All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Mings, and I suppose I can't put this video off any longer. It's been hanging over me for months now, and I think I finally have to talk about it. Now, the truth is, I've been dreading making this video because I don't like to complain about things I love, and I don't want to seem ungrateful and complain about a remake which none of us expected would ever happen. But at the same time, I have a lot of things to say about this game, and I know that not all of it will be well received. I actually believe that this remake did more damage to the Advanced Wars brand and future prospects of more Wars games being released than if it never came out at all. And this is due to a number of different factors. A little bit of bad luck, bad PR decisions, but most of all, amateur game developers. Before we get into that, let's take a look at the bad luck part. Some people may say that this game was cursed from the start, because of course, we have to talk about what happened before the game came out, the delays. In game development, some minor setbacks are almost always expected nowadays, as almost every game sees some kind of delay. And this seldom kills in trust, in fact, it can actually build it. But the reboot camp was delayed for two years. The very first delay was simply because the game wasn't finished yet. But the second one was, of course, because of the war that broke out. Now, you may disagree with their decision to halt a game because of a war, but I really think that this was out of WayForward's hands. I think this was a PR move made by Nintendo, and there was pretty much nothing they could do about it. Yes, it is a bit silly, but never underestimate how much a company is willing to protect their image. Now, of course, they took a big gamble on this, because when the war broke out, there was some consensus that it would be over quickly, maybe just a few weeks at the most. But yeah, that kind of failed spectacularly. At the time of making this video, the war is still going on. This meant that they had to put the game on indefinite hold, and nothing kills hype more than not having a date to look forward to. Furthermore, they also had to pay back all the pre-orders, because you can't just sit on people's money indefinitely. You'll run into legal troubles if you do that. I don't know how many sales they lost out on by cancelling pre-orders, but I have to imagine that it was quite a bit. And that's also something that we have to touch upon in this video, the sales numbers. How can we know how the reboot can performed if we don't talk about its sales? And one of the reasons why I put off making this video for so long was actually because I was waiting for the sales numbers so I could talk about it. But I waited and I waited and I waited, and no sales records were ever released to the public. Believe me when I said I looked everywhere for these numbers, but they simply do not exist on the internet. The only thing I could find was this Reddit thread where someone said that they supposedly sold 400,000 copies. But even in this thread, the author admits to not really having any sources to corroborate those numbers. If anyone watching this video knows anything about the sales or have any kind of sources, please let me know about them in the comment section below because I actually don't believe they exist. Now, I may not be able to show you any specific numbers, but I do know one thing, and that is, if sales numbers are hidden from the public, the game probably sold like ass. Because we all know that if the game sold well, they would have bragged about it. There would have definitely been some kind of a Mitsu article praising the game for its high sales numbers. So yeah, the game did not sell well. I think 400,000 is a positive estimate. Based on my experience of sales numbers and the size of the Advanced Wars franchise, I think the sales numbers could have gone as low as 100,000. Maybe somewhere between 100 or 300k. Now, here's the thing. I do not blame WayForward for the second delay of the reboot camp. It was most likely out of their hands and probably a PR move from Nintendo itself. However, I can blame WayForward for the initial delay because if they had released the game on the 3rd of December 2021, like was initially advertised, the game would have already been out before the war broke out and most likely would have sold way better. And this delay was 100% due to WayForward's incompetence and poor planning. Many of you may remember that a former employee of WayForward who worked on the game reached out to me in private to leak a bunch of details. The reason why he did this was because he was pissed off at his company. He and a bunch of other employees just got laid off with absolutely no war warning or cause, drastically cutting into the development section of the game. Furthermore, according to him, the office was an absolute mess. They kept procrastinating and kicking cans down the road. There were several things that demanded immediate attention that were given none. And by the way, all the leaks that this guy gave me were later validated in future trailers, so he was 100% legit. He really was a WayForward employee. 
hearing about these things, I have to wonder if WayForward was not a good choice of developer for this particular game. It seems to me like they made a lot of basic mistakes, and this makes sense if you look at their gaming library. They haven't really done any turn-based strategy games that I'm aware of. Most of their games have been beat-em-ups and side-scrollers. Now, I will give them credit where credit is due. I think they did a good job with the game's aesthetics. The COs all look amazing, the power activations are full of life and personality, and the soundtrack is banger upon banger upon banger. They pretty much nailed every single CO theme, with the exception of Hawk, and added even more flair and personality to the game by giving each CO unique power tracks. However, my praise pretty much ends there. Aside from these few things, I feel like WayForward pretty much failed in every other aspect of the game. I may have praised this game's aesthetics when it comes to COs and power activations, but I really cannot make this video without addressing the massive elephant in the room, which are the in-game graphics. I thought these graphics would grow on me the more I played the game, but the more I look at them, the more I hate them. These graphics are atrocious, there's no defending this. I have a bunch of friends who I used to play Advanced Wars with on the cartridge back in the days, and every single one of them hated these graphics, and many of them outright refused to buy the game because of them. I have no idea why WayForward decided to go with this shiny, sterile, toy soldier aesthetic that makes it look like you're playing on a board game meant for children. Maybe that was the goal, to make the game more child-friendly, but in doing so, they turned off a good chunk of their audience. Compared to the classic graphics from over 20 years ago, which still look good today, these new remastered graphics kind of felt like a downgrade by comparison. And furthermore, these graphics were more than just bad to look at, they were also detrimental for the game itself. A very common criticism that I heard from a lot of people was that the units were way too hard to tell apart, and I wholeheartedly agree with this. Here's a shot of a chaotic battlefield from the classic games. Immediately upon looking at this, you can tell what's going on. All the units look distinct from each other, and it's not hard to tell them apart. Now let's do the same thing with the remastered graphics. I don't know about you guys, but I am having difficulties telling the units apart at first glance. I'm not saying it's impossible, but in a game like Advanced Wars where you have to parse large amounts of information at once, it does become very annoying to constantly have to check the units to make sure the tank is not a medium tank or a recon. For me, the most egregious example of this was the fighters and bombers. They look way too similar to one another, and while I was playing through the campaign, I got dicked over several times due to mistaking one for the other. And the thing that bothers me the most about this is that all of this was completely unnecessary, because if WayForward had just put a little bit more effort and brains into their development, they could have included a toggle feature to allow people to swap back to the classic graphics. This is a common feature of almost every single modern remake, and there really is no excuse for why WayForward couldn't have included this feature in their game. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say things like, oh, Manx, if you want the old graphics, why don't you just go back and play the old game? And to that I say, of course I would have liked to play the reboot camp with classic graphics. I would have literally gotten the game I love with extra features added to it, and the ability to play online with my friends. This one little feature could have salvaged so much about what I don't like about the remake. At the very least, it would have made the game more playable. But the sad reality is that even with a feature such as this, there are still a ton of other issues with this remake. The most egregious to me is how much it wastes your time. As long as you're on small maps, you won't really notice how slow the new Reboot Camp AI is, but the moment the maps get a little bigger, it really becomes apparent that this AI is horribly optimized, and it struggles to move its units across larger distances. It is actually ridiculous how long the enemy phases of this game can last on some of the bigger maps like Great Sea Battle. And that is when you take advantage of the speed up feature. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad they added a speed up button, but I felt like it wouldn't have been needed if the game wasn't so slow to begin with. Just look at the classic animations and how quick they are compared to the remastered ones. Even when you speed up the remastered ones, they still end up being similar in time. The animations and movements themselves aren't the only example of the reboot camp wasting your time. Here you can see Flak activating his superpower in the classic games. And now, let's take a look at Flank doing the same in the remastered version. I 
I get that Advanced Wars isn't supposed to be a game that is played super quickly, but that doesn't mean you should waste the player's time with these stupid animations that go on forever. The game just doesn't flow that well compared to the original, and it really makes it tedious to play. Another big point of criticism for me is this game's AI. While I appreciate that it doesn't cheat in Fog of War maps anymore, it seems to have gotten dumber in 20 years, which is actually quite remarkable. Sometimes I don't even know what the AI is doing. It seems to be moving its units around at random, and it also likes to bunch them up in balls for some reason, which leads to very passive gameplay. One thing I actually kind of want to do is make a video where I pitch the two AIs up against each other. How I'm going to do this is that I'll just play two games simultaneously and mirror the AI's moves with each other. This might be a little bit difficult to do as I could get different luck values, but I'll find a way to work around it. The reason I want to conduct this experiment is because I actually have a theory that the original AI would beat the reboot one. Sure, the original Advanced Wars AI was dumb as hell, but at the very least it moved its units towards the player, whereas the reboot camp AI just seems to be passive. And it's not just in terms of gameplay that the AI is passive, something also clearly broke when it came to power activation. In the original games, once the AI got their superpower, they would just activate it immediately. This was predictable, but it also meant that you would go up against it at some point, whereas in the reboot camp, the AI seems to sit on their power for some weird reason. And no, it's not that they're waiting for a turn where it's more effective, it actually seems to be completely random. In the Green Earth mission Sea Fortress, where Eagle goes up against Hawk, he basically sat on his Black Storm for almost the entire mission, turning it into a complete joke. There is absolutely no question in my mind that whoever was responsible for programming the AI of the reboot camp was completely incompetent. How the hell do you manage to make an AI that is dumber than the one that came 20 years before it on the freaking Game Boy Advance? That is a freaking achievement. And of course, who can forget the myriad of bugs we had at launch, like bombers suddenly getting indirect range. I guess they really wanted to reference that translation error in the original, huh? There was also a glitch where if you ended your turn in a specific way, you could get infinite money on day one, which turned some maps into an absolute joke. And then of course we have the most prevalent bug, one that I experienced multiple times in my playthrough of the campaign, and that was Sturm meteor striking your switch, crashing the game whenever he uses his power. This could also randomly occur with other superpower activations, but it was by far the most prevalent when Sturm did it. Apparently the reason was some kind of memory overload. I'm not a programmer, so I don't really know why it happened, but you know who should have known? Way forward. And of course we have to talk about the atrocious multiplayer experience that the reboot can brought. Being a Nintendo game, my expectations were low from the get-go, but they still managed to get floored. For them to only allow us to play against friends with a code and to only play on very small maps felt like a slap in the face. I know for a fact that WayForward was working on an online lobby as well as random quick matches, because the guy who leaked me the info told me that they were. But then, apparently, that just got scrapped because they didn't think multiplayer was important. This just goes to show that while there may have been some advanced words fans working on this game, they sure as hell could not have known a lot about the game, because to not focus on the multiplayer scene for a remake like this is absolutely absurd. Even 20 plus years after the games came out, there are still thousands of people active on Advanced Wars by web playing the game and enjoying it. This game has a massive fan base that it could have tapped into, and for them to just scrap online multiplayer like that is absolutely inexcusable. So yeah, you can probably tell from the tone of my voice that this game angers me. I am grateful that we got it, but I am disappointed because I believed it could have been so much more. It could have been my favorite game of all time. It could have been something that brought the entire Advanced Wars community back together to play it again. And it was none of that. It was a quick, cheap nostalgia trip down memory lane. It allowed us to relive a couple of missions, and it may have brought some new faces into the community that weren't there before but I really do think that this remake is one of the most wasted ones in terms of pure potential that we've had in a very long while. At the end of the day, this game was a little bit cursed in terms of luck, but it also had the wrong developer in Way Forward. They never should have been chosen to make this game. They clearly didn't have the experience or the knowledge of the series to make a good remake. And while we don't know the sales numbers, I don't expect that they are very high. So in the future, whenever someone gets an idea to make a worse game, they're gonna look back at this and think, yeah, 
probably not a good idea to make this game. The community clearly isn't there. But the community is there, and they are numerous, and they are enthusiastic, and they love this game. I believe that the competitive scene of Advanced Wars will remain strong for years to come, and I intend to make content about this game for as long as you guys want to watch it, because I really do love it. And it is because I love it that I criticize this game. This wasn't the remake we deserved. I am grateful that it was made at all, but it should have been better. I have actually seriously dabbled with the idea of developing an Advance Wars indie game of my own that is a clone of the game, but still different enough to not be copyrighted by Nintendo. It's an idea that's been spinning around in my mind for quite a while now. Something may happen with it eventually. If you are a developer or a graphical artist that have had similar ideas, then definitely feel free to reach out to me. Maybe we can get something going. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think it needs to be said, but I wouldn't expect a lot of Reboot Camp content on the channel moving forward. Not gonna say I'll never fire it up again, there might come a time when I might want to do so. Maybe we'll actually get a Dual Strike DLC, I certainly wouldn't expect it, but, you know, crazier things have happened in the past. Now this is the part where I would like to ask you guys for your opinions. What did you think about the Reboot Camp? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Do you think anything I said in this video was objectively wrong? I always love hearing your opinions. And if you like the Reboot Camp and you still play it, I would love to hear exactly what it is about it that you like. Maybe something I didn't quite appreciate myself. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am done. My name is Mengs. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more Advanced Wars content. And I'll see you guys next time.